It ain't no God like the God I serve. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh my goodness. He's going to get better and better. And good and good as they say. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm blessed today to bring folks to bread of life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's ask y'all to turn me to Jeremiah chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to read and then I'm going to pray. And it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, and this is your mind, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. Then said I, Oh Lord, behold, I cannot see, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For you shall go through all that I shall send you. And whatsoever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down the build and to plant. Amen. Father, we bless your holy name and we just thank you, Father God, for being who you are. You are the Prince of Peace and Everlasting Father. You are the Holy One, the Righteous Son, the Lamb of God, the yeah. One who was slain with God. Oh, Father God, there is none like you. The way that you're able to manifest yourself, Lord God, the things that only you can do, we give you glory, yeah, honor, Lord. and praise, Lord God. God. And Father, I just ask that you speak with me. I yield to you, Lord God. Yeah. I just yeah. 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 God. And that you can have your way, touch your people today. Let them hear what the Spirit is saying, God. In the name of Jesus, yes. God, open up eyes of understanding. Give revelation, Father God. Let it hit you and give you the Spirit, Father God. Yes. And Lord, you be glorified. Yes. And you be glorified. We give you all the honor and praises in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. You know, uh, in the Bible, it shares many stories of the Lord using people to relay His message. You know, if you are called into the family of God through Christ Jesus, you got a message. You got a word, amen? amen. And it's important that we allow God to use us as his mouthpiece for his kingdom and his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's Hallelujah. nothing like being used for God. It's nothing like it. And so, you know, we are living and we're saying this in the last and evil days. We hear this every day that we are living in the last and evil days. But guess what? The world ain't seen nothing yet. The last and evil days until what? Because it's more. It's more that's to come. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. And so the spirit of the Antichrist, it's been here. It's been here. But it's getting more bolder as the days come forward. Amen. And so the spirit of the Antichrist is the spirit against Christ. It's against Christ. Amen. So anything that's contrary to the spirit of God that denies the Christ is anti-Christ, just not of Christ. Amen. And so, you know, this, this world has been and is still full of witchcraft and deception and rebellion. And the sad part about it is there's no fear of God. A lot of people do not fear God. Right. Like they don't. Don't fear God, the true living God. They don't fear. People worry about more what man going to do than what God going to do. That's an issue right there because it's that you don't understand his sovereignty. Hallelujah. What he's really able to do. Right. Glory to God. And you know, the sad, another sad thing about it is the way that it's moving through the church. The so-called church. Let's yes. say that. Amen. Amen. It, it's terrible. When we always talk about the feel-good messages that people give. And you know, now that they got the, the, the church parties. It's going on. Uh, yes. Bishop was talking about that last week, boy. I'm trying to say. You saw that video? I said, no, I just struck me out. Hallelujah. But they having church parties like it's going down. They got the, I mean, why even go to church if I could have did that last night party and went, went home and laid down? It don't even make no sense. You got the same spirit in there that, you know, yeah. glory to God. Hallelujah. But it is what it is, and this is nothing new 
of God. God knew all that and seen all beforehand. It was already with you. It just gets worse. They were doing all this stuff way back then. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then you got idolatry, which, you know, we always think about statues and stuff like that, you know, idols and stuff. <laughs> idols. People make idols and things like that to worship right. or whatever. But you got people that call themselves ministers that bring idols into the church. It's a group of prophets, or supposed to be prophets or whatever. And all they wear is Gucci. They wear Gucci. What's wrong with that? Every last one of them wear Gucci. They suits are Gucci, they belts are Gucci, they t-shirts Gucci. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they're suits are these days. It's not as Louis Vuitton. Now, what's wrong with having nice things? It's okay to have certain things. But right there, you set up an idol. If all of your ministers wear to you, that's your idol. Everybody got to wear Gucci. Everybody. And so when you in church and you try to get a word from God, but you can't help but to see how shocked they look. You know what I'm saying? Looking good. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm going to get that bag. I'm going to get you trying to focus, but they just look, they know they're looking fine. And then they post pictures almost every day behind Lamborghinis and houses, you know, and stuff like that. And I'm just like, people are like, oh, you looking good today. You looking, you know. And I'm like, you make I get the message. You got to get the message instead of all that, you know, those things. You know, it, it's nothing wrong with having nice things, but when you set it up as an idol, it's an issue. It's an issue. It's a problem, especially when you come before the church. Because you already think you're getting your money or stealing your money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But these 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 prophets do though. Yeah. They ask for fifteen hundred dollar uh, seeds, and the Lord ain't gonna bless you if you don't give it. If you don't, I gotta go. I got one woman said, um, I got I can't go to God empty handed. I gotta have something. What you got in your hand? What's your sacrifice? And then the husband called and said, uh, you have to uh, uh, tell everybody that to connect with that uh, prophecy, they need to get $1,500. Uh, and I would have said, you would not get a Gucci suit on me. That's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, absolutely. You know, I mean, I, to each his own, but when you when you see things, you have to say things. Because I believe a lot of them didn't start out like that. They didn't start out like that. You know what I'm saying? They feel like they're being used, and but the, the enemy is the one that's using them. But I ask this question. What is it for a man to profit the whole world and lose your soul? Amen. What is it for? It? You know what I'm saying? That was a total turn off to me when I saw that. Because some of them teach some good stuff, but sometimes they just, everybody got to slip in the, the big seed. Within their words, somebody got to sow something big. Everybody. They could not walk through it. Everybody got to worry about the seed. There's nothing wrong with sowing seeds. You're supposed to sow into the kingdom. You're supposed to give into the house of the Lord. Give back to God. Yes, you do. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we start asking for 15, 2,000, you know, money like that, just every time, rebuke us. No, I'm going to give it. <laughs> rebuke us in the name of Jesus. We, we, in some way, we done got laws. Amen. You sow what you want to sow. You give what you want to give. And, and that's a blessing, you know, that God will bless you back because it's from the heart. Yep. Don't give it that you expect it again. Oh, well, I can't go before God. I can't go pray for you because if you ain't got 15, if you ain't got, if you ain't got $5, and I say I can't pray for you because you ain't got $5, then. It's a problem. You know, you have to give and give it from the heart, and God knows if it's from the heart. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so, you know, it's a lot of idols set up inside of the church. And not only that, they make these people idols. These people, people are idols. Some pastors and stuff are idols to people. They don't think that their prayers get to God um, unless they go through the pastor, the prophet, the preacher, or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, they think that they're holier than everybody else. You know, just things like that. You know, just idols. That's why you, you know, just, oh, God. Don't set up idols in the house of the Lord. I don't want to be an idol at all. Amen. Now, I might be walking towards me if I say, okay, I want to, you know, possess some of the gifts of the Spirit, go preach like that or something, and that's cool because the Holy Spirit is doing it. But I'm not an idol. I fall short. Me and Bishop fall short. Amen. We need prayer just as much as you need prayer. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And we recognize that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You know, and then, you know, even, and, and I'm just talking to church and stuff right now, though, but just the um, adultery inside of the church. Amen. Many people, you have congregations, everybody see you with somebody inside the home, you know, and stuff like that. And you want to know why, they, you know, things are going on. Why did that, that spirit runs through the church like that? It's because it's coming from the head going down into the, uh, come on down. They want to lay don't touch me. Don't touch me. If you dealing with some sexual perversion, don't even touch me. I don't want to know. I don't do a lot of hugs. I don't do a lot of none of that. Because I don't want to know. I done dealt with it, got rid of it, and I don't want it. Amen. 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 Glory to God. If you know you're going through something, don't come up in here hugging people and this, that, and the third. You know you got that going on. Don't be touching people. Amen. Glory to God. 
But seriously, like, and, and, it, and it's not just um, physical adultery, but spiritual. Yeah. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then you shouldn't have no other God. Even tackling in with something else. Even going to, uh, to something else, like making something else your, like a person or um, anything that can just be your go-to other than God. You can be committing adultery because that's another type of God. Amen. You, that's, the, the Lord is your Lord. That's your Savior. That's the one you're married to. Amen. Glory to God. Unless you have a, a marriage, you know, something like this. But other than that, anything else outside, you know, you can't dibble and dabble in, in different type of things, witchcraft or crystals and all kinds of stuff like that. False gods, the Buddha. Oh, yeah, well, I'm still dealing with uh, the, the Muslims and this, that, and the third. You can't do both. It's right. only, you only can have that one God. Amen. Amen. Money, Amen. all those things. You can commit a, a spiritual adultery. Amen. Glory to God. And so then, you know, even inside the churches, you have the, the uh, what they call the Kundalini spirit. That's the counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. Right. So you see people passing out, doing that stuff like that, and it ain't even the spirit of God. Right. Some people just do it. You ever see somebody about to uh, <laughs> pray or do something, and they just hit the floor like, I ain't even say nothing yet. I mean, some people have the Holy Ghost where, you, you know, you walk in power, but if you got the Kundalini spirit, it looks crazy. It looks like it's something that ain't right with that spirit. Yeah, it does. It really does, but it's a counterfeit to the Holy Ghost. Some people act like they're singing in tongues, but they didn't sing in tongues. They made it up something. They don't, it don't mean nothing. Amen. But when you got the Holy Ghost, you're able to recognize that it's not the real singing in tongues, that it's not the Holy Ghost. Amen. But to everything, the enemy has a counterfeit to the Holy Spirit. Amen. When Moses threw down his staff, so did the, the um, <laughs> yeah, the king, the wizards of the four and the Pharaoh's folks, they threw down there too, right? They did what he did, but he ate it up, right? Because God is so powerful, hallelujah. But what took the case for me was the other day I heard about a pastor who, and I, I listened to it, he said that the Holy Spirit told him to cuss. Oh, yeah, that's the new thing. He, the Holy Spirit told him to cut. And he said, and the Lord said to me, your language is bait for the people I want you to reach. Do that make sense to anybody, like honestly? Do it make sense that God would tell you to, to cuss as bait to get people to come in? But praise the Lord, because y'all know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Right. Amen. That don't even make sense. Now, he said, no, no, more. I'm calling them bees and saying F you. But it's other little words that you can say. He said, oh, not that that, but I'm, I'm cool with those words, and I'll use it. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's not the spirit of God. And so now you want to go in there and take that inside the church. Woe unto them and all Amen. those that do that. They are in trouble. Their soul is in trouble. And they're in the great falling away right now. It's the great falling away from God right now. Oh, God, the rebellion is greater in this hour. Hallelujah. These are critical times that many people are being deceived and led astray. Think about it. You can go into the church and party. You can go into the church and cuss. You can go into the church and sleep around. You can go into the church and have a ball, right? Yeah. He said, smoke weed. I don't even want to know who's doing that. I'm just going to pray for them. <laughs> it's just anything and everything. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, because it's, yeah, the, 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 the medicine. medicine. Yeah, for the medicine. No, no. That's what they say. That's what they saying, right? No, no, no. Amen. That's what they say. I have a but, question about. Oh, we got it. Oh, I'm sorry. It was, it was just understanding on the creative part. Like, uh, but I got to. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're sorry today. But, you know, just being that it's So with no accountability for their action. Do what you want to. No call to repentance. Who wants to repent if you don't want to bring it in inside the church and say, this, this, have a ball. You know, no accountability, no repentance, no word of holiness. Be holy for God is holy. You know, like they used to preach back in the day, and some of us still preach that. These false teachers, false preachers, false prophets are of the world, workers of darkness. Amen. And it feels good when you love the world and you want to go in somewhere where they can agree with you. People don't want to hear about repentance. Why am I going to come to this church talking about holiness if I can go over this church and they talk about something different? That is confusion in the body of Christ. It's not of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so in um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'll just read it. Verse 3 and 4, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Yeah. 
Yeah. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. Mm -hmm. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables. Mm -hmm. no, they don't want to hear the truth no more. Because the ears have been tickled by somebody else. Why don't want to come and hear the truth? But the word says this, and some of it tells us this. You know, they, they got all kinds of stuff coming up in, in here. But um, but God, God is great. John warned us in John 1, 4 and 1. It says, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, yeah. but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Yeah. Because right. many false prophets have gone out to the world. We were going yeah. way back then. Yeah. There's been a warning since then. Let right. us know they're going out. Test the spirit. Every spirit that says it's of God ain't of God. You better test the spirit yeah. and see right. if it's of God. You know, and so that's the way that the world is moving. It's been like that, but it's more bolder. It's gotten more stronger, you know, and just the truth, I don't care. We just gonna do what we want, just rebel, forget God, you know, whatever. That's how the devil in this thing is doing. You know, they've been doing it, but now they got more vessels that's willing to be open to allow us to come in. And then with everything in the world that we open ourselves up to is able, you know, the enemy is able to come in. But how many know that God has chosen some people, hallelujah, formed them before he, before they was even in their mother's womb. Glory to God. Sanctified and ordained you. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, he did. For such a time as this. Amen. For such a time as this to go and to tell what needs to be said. Whatever God tell you to say, to go say. Hallelujah. Amen. And they don't feel good. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. To go say what God is telling you to say. God has put word in people's mouth. He wants you to go minister what he's saying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's been doing this forever. You know, Elijah, um, Isaiah, um, Amos, uh, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, Paul, Jesus, just to name a few, had a word of repentance. Amen. Repent. 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 And God is his word, and his word don't change. He changed not. It's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. So the same word repentance then, the same word repentance now. Yes. Repent, repent, repent. Amen. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, glory to God. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord is raising up many people to minister this word of repentance and salvation yes. unto people. Hallelujah. 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 Repentance is a blessing. For us to be able to repent, just to have this opportunity right now to say, I'm going to turn away from this sin. I regret doing it. I'm going to turn away right now. You know, that is a privilege and an honor for him to just get up and just repent us out in our mess and say, you know what, no. I ain't going to give him a chance to repent. But God still said, repent. Turn away. Turn away. You know, and, and the closer we walk with God, uh, the more we hate what he hates. And he hates sin. So when we sin, we should hate it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we fall short of his glory, yeah. but it shouldn't feel good to sin. You should feel some kind of way like, you know what, God, I done did it again. I'm sorry, Lord. I, I regret this totally. I don't want to sin against you. I don't want to break your heart. I don't want to break your heart. I tell you, if I do something and the Lord yell at me, that breaks me all the way yeah. down. I, I, I will cry. I try to do the best that I can. I don't like him that mad at me. I do not like that yelling voice. I like the still small voice. I don't like that big old voice, Lord. And then I feel like I did something wrong to you, God. You know, I feel like that. You know, that's how we should feel when it comes to us just constantly doing stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. We should feel some kind of way about God's heart. We want him to care about us. We got to care about him. Hallelujah. He got feelings and emotions. That's where we got them from. Yeah. It's a grief, not the Holy Spirit. I mean, his spirit should be green. That's right. emotion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yeah. And so, you know, with everything that's going on, some people don't understand why the world is the way it is today. Mm -hmm. And some people don't have no idea what's getting ready to come on. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's getting ready to happen. They don't understand the wrath of God. They think he's a wicked God. They don't understand this thing right here. But we have to warn the people. Yeah. Water right. and not look at men in their faces. We got to sound the alarm. Yeah. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody, glory to God. We got to tell them. Mm -hmm. Who want to tell them? Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming. Yeah. Who want to tell them Jesus is coming? Yeah. Hallelujah. Get your house in order because he's coming. Yeah. Destruction is coming. Yeah. Repent. Yeah. Who want to tell the people? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to tell us. 
And God is calling his people today not just to bring um, a word that's going to um, talk about just repentance. Yeah. But God has other words to give people. Yeah. And we just need to be a mouthpiece of God. Thank you, Lord. you know, to go tell a lost generation a word of salvation. You know, as a Christian, we should have a heavy heart for people that are not saved. Mm -hmm. It should bother us when we know people are not saved. You know, uh, hey, you know, they on the one way you say the Lord help them. You know, you want to pray for them. Mm -hmm. You don't want to see nobody fall by the wayside. It's like, hey, you know, when you know what you know, you care about other people. Some people are selfish. They're just like, you know, well, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? No, you don't want to just be good because that, that place that, you know, hell is not a place that you want nobody to go because there's no turning back. That's it. It's over. It's all. Yes. Ain't no song again. None of that. That's it. Hallelujah. And I'm Sharice feel that in her spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, they don't Hallelujah. They don't want to see nobody fall by the wayside. Who's going to tell them? Hallelujah. And even though they messed up, if you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and with a whole heart ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive you. Some people don't even feel like they're able, they're, they're capable of being a child of God or being accepted by Jesus Christ because of all the mess they've been done. But they need somebody to say, I was a mess. I was out there doing this. I was sitting around. I was lying. I was sitting. I was doing all this. And I'm still being cleansed and purged. And so he can do it for you. If he can change me, he can change you. Who want to go back to those people that they used to run with and say, you know what? Yeah, God can do it for you too. We got to talk. Yeah, God ain't bring us out for, just for us. He brought us out to go bring the people in. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.
the job was the way that God used to get me inside of the people's homes because they weren't attending church. May not have been going to church. You know what I'm saying? They may have walked away from the church. They may have had church hurt. They might just didn't know Christ. You know, they might just needed that healing at that time. Couldn't get out. You know, some people were sick, and I would go and, you know, dang. Uh, people needed a miracle, like a right now word from the Lord. And God loved to show up and show out. Hallelujah, glory Amen. to God. Amen. And I love that. I, 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 I love uh, being able to go in and out of these houses. <laughs> Hallelujah. So a lot of people, like, they really didn't want to do the survey. Like, you know, I would go put notes on them and stuff like that. And then I would always have to go back, because that was my job. But some people would come to the door, and they face all balled up, like, what do you keep coming to my house for? You know, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, and they might roll their ass up, and I'm, all right, how you doing? You know, something like that. And I say, I'm blessed, honey, thank you. God is good, honey. And just that question opens up a door for communication. Even he's going to be good or bad, you know. If they ain't doing good, they doing, they're not doing bad. And then they would just start having a conversation with me. Or whatever, about what they might have been going through, or something that they might need, or just put them away they did. And I remember I went to this one lady's house, and she was just this angry. She was inside the door, and she was talking trash, and told me to get away from the door. And I said, Okay, what's wrong? How can I pray for you? And that opened up the door for communication. She needed prayer. She needed some prayer. Right? So she just started talking, and we started talking to the door, and she opened up. You can come in, right? So I got my, my survey done, but I was still able to talk and minister to her. And, you know, by the time I, um, I, I left, I had given her a word of hope. And it changed her whole attitude. And when I left, she was happy. Because I never, if I was able to minister, I never left without praying for people. I always prayed. That was my job. I had to go, I, I was on a mission. Okay, God, where am I going? We had conversations of where am I going? We're going to go first. You know, this is what we do. And, that, and that's what he had me do. And I enjoyed, you know, when I had people that, like, had the little stony heart and stuff that I could get in and stuff like that because the Holy Ghost was the one that was able to do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so God can use you anywhere to get to anybody. And as long as you're going out with the attitude of, you know what, I want to be used by you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I talked about Miss Betty. I think I told y'all probably know about the lady named Miss Betty who was um, like 83, I believe, when I met her. And when I got her her uh, case, I was looking, and it was telling me, you know, like, was she, she was cussing everybody out, she was cursing everybody out, was coming to her door. And I was like, oh, I know what she did. You sure know how to handle <laughs> And I went upstairs, and I knocked on the door, and she had like a little African um, home health thing. And um, he looked at me like, man, y'all people just don't get it. Y'all just keep coming back. He said, she ain't she, she gonna do it, you know what I'm gonna go get her though. And um, I heard her say, open the door. And when he opened the door, she looked at me and I looked at her and she said, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah, we start worshiping God, hallelujah. And you know, it was a blessing because she could see the glory of God. She told me, she said, I see the glory of God when he came to the door. When he opened the door, I saw it. You know, if I know she's gonna cuss me out, what she's gonna do. But I had to do what I had to do. And I, you know, I said, God, you go, you go with me, amen. But we became good friends, and she had stage four cancer. Oh. And I used to get on her because she kept smoking cigarettes. I said, well, do what you want. What are you trying to do, man? Keep smoking these cigarettes and stuff. But she was such a sweet lady, and all she needed was somebody to care for her. She just wanted somebody to be there for her. So we started talking, and she, I, made, I made relationships and friendships with people. And, um, and I would come and go to the store for her, take her to the store, whatever it is she wanted to do. I would take her, and her final request was, could you make me some of your spaghetti? <laughs> I made her spaghetti, and she ended up passing away. Oh, Praise God. But we yeah. prayed, and we worshiped, you know, and sometimes all people need is somebody with a word of hope, somebody to pray for them, because God ain't going to heal everything all the time, you know. And, and her being um, older, with a lot of conditions, it was God's will whether he was going to heal or whether he was going to take her. But he's going to send somebody there, my daughter there, to be a blessing, you know, and I'm going to use her so that I can be glorified and so that I can break peace to the lady. She didn't have no peace because nobody was speaking it into her life. Nobody was speaking. I, I've never met, I met family members after because I ended up going to the home ball. But I hadn't met nobody, and I was over there all the time. So nobody was really coming like that to help her. But I would go over there and help her. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, you know, God can use us anywhere. Um, you know, the Lord, uh, through this journey, it was so many people that were mentally struggling. 
So many people that I ministered to that needed a word of hope, that needed a word of encouragement. Be encouraged. You know, that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. That if God be for you, who can be against you? You know, that you are more than a conqueror. There were so many words I had to give people going in and out of these houses. And every time I would leave, I'd be so blessed that God would just touch and move on them. And I'm going to tell you, throughout that, uh, a lot of people, they would just, you'd be crying tears of joy. Tears of joy, hallelujah. And Bishop knows he used to be sitting in the car waiting on me sometimes. I'm going to be like, I was <laughs> he was all kinds of ministry for the people. Hallelujah. That, that was our ministry too. And um, and it gave me joy and pleasure to see what God was getting ready to do next. And I can tell you, um, out of all the people house I've been to, it, it might have been, I can only remember one person that really didn't receive me, I'll be honest. But it might have been two or three, but I remember one. I really remember one person. But nevertheless, everybody ain't going through it, that's fine. But, you know, working this job, I was able to go neighborhood to neighborhood. I get out at bus stops. I go to the store. Any way that I can just go out and reach people, I would go out to reach people. I had to tell them the goodness of God. And so the Lord told me, he said, when I be told to resign, he said, you, and I, I was like, Lord, you want me to leave this job? And we had a conversation. He said, you have touched at least 500 people. At least between 500 people have got saved, who dedicated their life to me. Deliverance or healed. Hallelujah. Yes, to God be the Lord. Hallelujah. To God be the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm just like, wow. I just, I praise the Lord for that. And so there are many, many more people in the world that need those encounters. They need a word from the Lord. Who's going to tell us? Y'all going to tell us? Yeah. Y'all going to tell us? Yeah. Hallelujah. Who going to tell these young men out here that there's a better way than just killing and murdering? I want to tell them it's a better way through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody got to tell them it's, it's, it's a better way. Yes, it is. How many more of y'all going to die? That's what I was saying before. Ain't nobody winning. Everybody losing somebody. Wake up. You playing a cat and mouse game of who can kill and who can kill this neighborhood. And all y'all crying and weeping and grieving and don't know how to get free. Don't know how to be touched. Don't know how to, 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 to be healed. Don't know how to move on. Because that spirit of retaliation. Who want to go in and tell them and pray for them and pray for their heart? Help them to see a better way. That's right. Because they need it. They need it. Amen. They made a custom to what they're being taught. But they need somebody to come up here with a word of hope and a future for them. Because a lot of them be saying, I probably won't even be here next year anyway. I probably won't be here. And I don't think they won't even be here. Because their friends passed away. Mm -hmm. Who want to tell them that, that you can have life, life more abundantly? Who want to tell them? Who want to go pray over their life? And declare that they shall live and shall not die. Mm -hmm. Who going to do that? God needs people to go out and do that. Not go out there partying and let them get up in here with you. No, I don't need you to get up there with me. I need to go in there and pray for them. Let have them laid out. Hallelujah. Get the Holy Ghost here. Lord to God, lay them out. Cast some demons out of them in the name of Jesus. Cast that murder spirit out of them in the name of Jesus. Cast it out. Cast it out. Yeah. You ain't got time to be playing no games up in here. Jesus is on his way.
you and he's carried you thus far. Who's going to tell him? Because a lot of people feel like without their dads, you know what I'm saying, they feel some kind of way. Without their mom, they feel some kind of way. Amen. But Jesus loves you. Yeah. You know, some parents don't know how to speak right to their kids. Some parents beat them down so bad and say some of the gross, the nastiest, the hateful, and just uh, things to people, their children, they break their heart. And they don't know that, you know, what you say, they grow to remember. And then it causes a bitterness in their heart. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Who's going to tell them that Jesus loves them and he don't want nobody to perish? Amen. 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 Nobody to perish. Um, even when they don't receive it, because everybody's not going to receive it. You plant the seed, God water it, and he gives the increase. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so the, the Lord is putting his words in some of your mouths now to speak it. Don't miss the mark because of distractions. Mm -hmm. The church is so distracted. We already know with these phones and things, with this social media. People so so uh, occupied by what's going on here and distracted that we can't see people walking by, dead bodies walking by. Because they walking don't mean they're not doing not in Christ. Everything else walking is dead. It is what it is. And we missing them. On the phones, missing them, missing them. Hallelujah. As they walk by. And I, I just want to share part of, you know, called he gave the dream, and I see it on um yesterday on um Facebook, I posted. And he was talking about, you know, his dream about Devin and how, you know, um he was talking to Devin and joking with Devin, trying to, you know, get Devin to acknowledge him, and you know, Devin won Devin won half it. And uh, <laughs> and so he said, don't you see them people running around with, like, chickens with their head cut off? That's what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. People running around, the, uh, just some of them little young in the neighborhood, like, chicken head, they just do my business, I'm going to get that, I'm going to get that. You know, people just in general, robbing, stealing, killing, you know, all kinds of stuff going to run around, like, they ain't got no sense. You cut off a chicken head and watch the body run. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how they are. Like, they ain't got, the, their mind is just gone. People's minds are just gone today. Right? And so Devin said, that ain't funny. So a lot of people spend time laughing at what's going on in the world. Laughing at this person and oh, at this person that look at them. That, you know, laughing. And it ain't funny. Amen. It ain't funny. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the thing about this, anybody that know Devin, Devin a joker. Uh -huh. He would have made a laugh out of that. Uh -huh. <laughs> if he was alive, I like that uh -huh. Devin would have made a laugh out of that. But he, it, it ain't funny. His mind has changed. His mind is renewed. God's showing that Amen. through the dream. Amen. It ain't funny, like that's not funny. So what, what you need to do is pay attention and pray. Amen. That's the word for everybody. Yeah. And I told y'all before, when the Lord put devil in dreams, and I know between me and uh, Bishop our dreams, and uh, we gave me messages. I said, okay, this is what this is what that meant. This is what you know. And he can interpret, you know, he, he told him something that was very inspiring, very encouraging. And I see him rumble with them and told him. And I was like, wow, that, that's amazing. But just the way God is using these dreams to bring encouragement, still using people to be a messenger. Hallelujah. But he said, it's not funny. This is not funny. Go, um, pay attention. It's a scripture in the Bible that say, watch and pray. He came with scripture. He made it plain. Pay attention. Watch them. Look at what they're doing. And you pray for them. That wasn't just for him. That's what he's supposed to release the word. That's why I posted. He's supposed to release the word. Because he said, watch him. And then you pray. Mm -hmm. And then he told me they go on here to click for it. You're taking notes. That's what they do. I mean, they're taking notes of what's going on. It's like all the, everything I said is noted. Everything. Everything we do is noted. Everything we do is noted. Look it up in the Bible. Noted. They take notes. Yes. Oh, man. The books. Yes, they talk about the revelations. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Uh -huh. You know. And then he said, he went to laugh and try to get him, you know, to laugh again. He said he didn't pay no attention to him until he said, I miss you. And Devin gave him a hug. And then he told him, now go pray. Hallelujah. 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 And that's what we need to be today. In order for us to, to pray for people and stuff, we see what's going on. How should we be praying for this one? How should we be praying for that one? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that we can minister, give somebody a word that will come from the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. 
Glory, glory, glory. People running around and they need a word. They need a word. They need a word. That's it. We don't know what happened to that um, homeless person. Some of you, oh, they need to get a job. And you don't know what happened. They could have lost somebody, started grieving, and just lost it. They, right. you, know, you don't know what happened to people. Yeah. But a lot of times we can judge, be judgmental, and don't have no idea. Instead of wanting to pray for people and giving them a word, hey, can I pray for you today? You know, when I tell you about what God, we didn't see people and yell with people and pray with people. They had some of the, the most uh, wild stories. Glory to God. And then what? hope and light into that situation to the God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that's what God wants us to do. You know, sometimes, well, and I think, you know, when we leave or go somewhere, I know we got our own problems. We can't do stuff every day. But if you are in the place of people that you know are sinners and falling by the wayside, you know, get them to say, you know, Jesus is good. You know, and you can start a whole conversation. Get a conversation with somebody that needs a word and just tell them about the goodness of God. And everybody like I said, they ain't going to understand it, but everybody want to need a word. Somebody need a word. Amen. Somebody. Don't worry about rejection, because a lot of times people uh, worry about rejection. Don't worry about the rejection. Amen. You do what God tell you to do. You go where God tell you to go. You say what God tell you to say in the name of Jesus. Because at the end of the day, it be blood on our hands when we don't. We got to say what God say. And if you love people, you want to tell them what God say. Amen. Because you ain't going to be the first, and you ain't going to be the last. Or you might be the first, but you won't be the last. Amen. Nine times out of ten, God's already speaking to them about something. Who's going to be the person that's going to tell people what God is saying today? Amen. Who's going to tell them? You going to tell them? Well, praise God. That's my word. Stand to your feet. We're going to give God some praise. Who's going to tell them? Jesus, Lord. Who's going to tell them? Who's going to warn them? Other things come on, so God can turn their nights to day. I'll say it again. I'll say it. Who's going to tell him Jesus loves him? Who's going to tell there's a better way? Who's going to warn him? But the things coming on them, so God can turn their night to day. Somebody's got to warn them. Somebody's got to warn them. Somebody's got to tell them. Somebody's got to tell them. Would you help me say somebody?